Welcome to my channel, my name's Jared. This is another Sunday update video. I also post silent build videos on Wednesdays, so be sure to check those out as well. Today we're gonna to talk about the Model T and also the Bushmaster. So stay tuned for the Bushmaster. So here's the Model T. If you saw my last build video, you would have seen that this thing finally runs. It's very exciting. Uh, I finally got it to start and run. I have actually even driven it about 20 feet. So we'll get into that in a minute. Um, now what you didn't see in that video were the two to three days that I spent hand cranking this thing. So as you saw in the video, I rebuilt the carburetor, cleaned the fuel tank, put all the other little bits on, got it ready to start. But then when I went to turn it over, the starter didn't work. So um, you can't hand crank it. The starter to replace it, it's about $400 for a new one. It would have taken about a week to get a new starter. So I started cranking away on this thing, trying to get it to run. And with the new rings in it, it was a little bit stiff to turn it over. And of course, ultimately I had to make some adjustments to the carburetor to get it to run. So I cranked away on this thing for days until I had blisters on my hands and I never did get it to start. Um, but then eventually I decided to try out cleaning up the starter. And so, so here's the starter. Uh, and ultimately I just took it out uh, cleaned it with some degreaser and then um, there were two wires in here that the insulation was kind of frayed and coming off of so I put some electrical tape over those wires I greased the bushings and put it back together and it worked fine after that so once I got the starter cranking over I was able to make some adjustments to the carburetor and get everything figured out and then it did start up and run so it is running good I have had an issue come up since then so you may remember that I had to drill out a few broken head bolts and this one was broken and this one was broken. I think maybe one over here too. But anyway, um, after I ran it for a little while, I went to retorque the bolts and I had them torqued at like 35 pounds uh, initially because I was concerned about maybe stripping them. And I've heard that at most you go up to maybe 50 pounds, but a lot of people do like 40, 45 pounds of torque. Anyway, uh, when I retorqued them at 40 pounds, this bolt uh, stripped, which I was concerned about. So I've ordered uh, helicoil, helicoil um, to try to fix the threads on this one. And hopefully I'm gonna be able to do that without taking the head off. But if I can't, then I, it's not that big of a deal to take the head off. It just means I'll have to get another head gasket. And that head gasket, the copper version, it took me about a month or two to get that first one. They were out of stock at everywhere I checked for a long time. In fact, I ordered one and then the order was canceled and then I found another place and it took like a month wait to get one. So anyway, hopefully I can fix this without taking the head off. Uh, if not, then we'll have to get a new head gasket and so that may take a little while. Um, but anyway, it does run and that may be fixed you know, within the next day or two. I should have that, uh, that coil for it soon. So everything's looking really good on the Model T. You can see I went ahead and threw the lower seat cushion in and I wrapped them with blankets and then I've got the floorboards in there. You can kind of see in the back. I've got the battery and then that's the board for that. So everything's good um, as far as the engine and it does actually move. You know, I drove it just out of the driveway but I still need to go through the rear end and I still think I need to make some adjustments to the bands and the transmission to get all that stuff correct. But it's pretty crazy. Um, it's not like a, a more modern car where you can just kind of gradually take off with the clutch. I mean, it's either on or off. You're either, you're moving or you're not. There's no slow kind of take off and stop. But anyway, so the next steps for this is going to be the top. So you can see here, just a little bit of running and driving has already made this almost fall off. But so I've got to work on all the wood repairs for the roof, put the headliner in, the roof material, and like I mentioned, I have the correct vinyl ordered for the roof, and then I can start working my way down with the interior. So that's where we're gonna go next with this. Uh, but before I work on the interior and the roof of this, I'm gonna use this space to work on a few other things. So um, that is pretty much it for the Model T. Now we're gonna talk about the Bushmaster. Okay, so for those of you that are new to the channel or haven't seen this project, this is a Nissan 
Bushmaster. So back in the 80s, this was a dealer option. They would take a brand new truck, they would cut the top off of it, weld the bed to the cab, and then put this topper on it. And they named it the Bushmaster. There was a company that did it. You can see here. This Matrix company, they created the Bushmasters. It's a pretty rare vehicle. It essentially gave Nissan an SUV before they actually sold SUVs. Now, if you haven't seen this project before, I encourage you to go back and watch um, the early videos. This thing has come a very long way from when I got it. It sat outside for a long time. It looked awful on the outside. The engine was missing, had different wheels and tires. I've done a lot of work to get it to this point. Um, ultimately, what I have left to do is some work on the front end and the interior. So on the front end, the engine that I bought had the wrong oil pan on it and it was almost impossible to find the correct 4x4 oil pan for this engine. I did finally find one, but to get the engine in, I had to take the front differential out and I took the front axles out so that the oil pan for the two-wheel drive truck would fit in the place where the differential was. So now I have the correct oil pan, I gotta put that on, put the diff back in, I've got new axles for the front end, and I also have some suspension bushings because there's some, some rattling noises up there. So I've got to address that, but then the biggest thing left to do is the interior. So you can see here, there's metal frames that they welded in here. And, and of course there was a headliner, it was all destroyed. It was just coming down. So I've got to redo the headliner. You can see I've got most of the stuff in here. I've got this headliner material right there. I've got a carpet kit back there. I've got a bunch of seals and all kinds of other stuff. Um, so I was able to get a carpet kit for the truck version. So from here forward, I could get a kit for that carpet. Unfortunately, because of COVID, there is some kind of industry-wide shortage of carpet. It must be coming from overseas somewhere. And so there's no place, I've looked and looked and looked, and there's no place to buy additional carpet in more than one yard. They will only sell you one additional yard. And I need like, I think it was f three or four yards to do the rear section. So that's gonna be my biggest challenge on the interior. I did buy the one extra yard, but it's not gonna help me where I need it. But so anyway, I'm gonna be putting in a new headliner, new carpet. I've already put this cover on the steering wheel, which I, I love these, they're period correct. I, I like these covers. I also have a uh, dash cover to go on here so this thing is going to be transformed on the inside very soon. Um, I also had to, I had to replace this window. I had to have this back piece made. I ended up going with plexiglass on that. But yeah, this is um, it's an extremely interesting vehicle. It's just huge inside because it was a, I think it's a long bed pickup to begin with and then they put this topper on it. It has a seat there that folds up. It's really an amazing thing. And it does, it runs extremely well. So I had this parked, let's see, I think I need to adjust that. I had this parked um, for months while I was waiting on that oil pan. And when I went to start it, it just started right up. Idled perfect, ran great, drove home, excellent. Um, this engine, let's see, I'll pop the hood. Because I'm in California, it has to pass smog, which means it has to be 100% stock. So these things are pretty underpowered, and there are ways to get more power. You know, people recommend changing the carburetor to, I think it's a Weber they use, and there's other things you can do, but unfortunately I can't do any of that. So I had to go with the original carburetor and all the original vacuum hoses, which was just a, a mess. So that was pretty crazy to get it all back together but it does run extremely well. So I'm very happy with that. I also went through all the brakes and stuff like that. But like I said, uh, you should check out the other videos on this one if you're interested in it. Um, but yeah, so that's the Bushmaster. So there'll be videos coming out on this very soon. And then of course the Model T, will be, I'll be back on that one soon as well. Um, I do also plan on getting started on the, uh, the Land Cruiser body again very soon. So a video for that will be coming out soon as well. So, okay. That's it for this week, guys. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Bye.